Amen. But how many know that the best is yet to come? Which is the word of God. Amen. We can sing, we can shout, we can dance all day, but we need the word of the Lord. Amen. In such a time as this, we get a word from the Lord. Amen. So we're excited for all things on today in Jesus. Amen. Just in case if you did not feel welcome, amen, you're welcome. Just in case you didn't feel welcome. Amen. Whenever you come in the house of the Lord, you should feel welcome. Amen. But the one thing the Bible tells us, He's, the Bible said to enter to his gates with thanksgiving yeah. and to enter to his courts with praise. Yeah. So that means that whenever we come into the house of the Lord, we should come with the praise. Yeah. We should come with the hallelujah. Yeah. We should come yeah. with the thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Because God has been good to all of us on today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God don't owe anything. We owe him a praise. Yeah. Amen. The scripture says, if it had not been for the Lord, yeah. which was all my son, amen, amen, amen. Somebody could have read it. Someone could have read it by us in the newspaper on this morning. Someone could have saw us in the, in the news talking about someone got shot. But we glad, glad they got for my eyes to see, for my ears to hear, for my legs to walk. We're glad about it. So you are welcome on today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We just come. And I know only a few of us, but we come to give God praise. Amen, amen. I've learned, amen. My praise is not based on who's here or who's not here. Amen. My praise don't pray, my bet my praise is based on for who he is. Because if God don't do nothing else, he's done enough for me, I've done enough already. And my praise is because he is God. Amen. If you don't give me nothing else, that's why right. I still praise him because he is still God. Amen. From the rising of the sun. We're going down the same. His name is to be praised. Amen. Amen. So we're glad about it all today. You know, we have a long way to go. We have a long day on today. Amen. For people to come. Amen. At this hour. Amen. 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 And we thank God that we have two dynamic speakers on this afternoon. Amen. Amen. That's going to bring forth the word of God. Amen. The Bible said, man should not live by bread alone. Amen. Let me tell you We can feed our natural man. And our spiritual man to go lacking. But we need to feed the spiritual man. We need a word from the Lord. Amen. This is not time for us to sit back and, you know, it's not time for us to go to sleep. Amen. The Bible says, hard time to be wake up out of sleep. Amen. Many times the preachers go forth with the word of the Lord and then we be sleeping. And, 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 and that's the time we need to hear. The Bible said, he that has the ear, let him do what? Hear what the Spirit said to the church. We talk about the church, we're not talking about the building. That's right. That's right. You're talking about us. That's right. Amen. See, we mistake sometimes about, you know, the Lord's coming to the church. But no, he wants to speak to us. But we are the church. Amen. So we need to hear what thus say of the Lord. And at this time, amen, our two speakers on this afternoon will be our evangelist Jordan and our evangelist Giles, amen, on this afternoon, amen, and I'm ready to hear a word from the Lord, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hear a word from the Lord. At this time, we're going to present our first speaker, amen, in the person of our evangelist Jordan at this time. Okay, amen, I, I, I stand to at this time, amen, our evangelist Giles is going to come. And it would be our first speaker on this afternoon. Come on, give God a praise. that saved you and the God that anointed you. 
you the God that filled you with the Holy Ghost, with the mighty burning fire. That's the one you are applauding. love the Lord today. Thank you for allowing me to come. Amen. And share God's word. Amen. And we just love him today. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Out of everything I am, and everything I owe to be. When you look into my heart, you'll find a worshiper. 
in me. You'll find the worshiper in me. You'll find the worshiper. You'll find the worshiper in me. Father, we thank you. And we praise your name right now. Oh God, we thank you for the increase in your spirit right now. Thank you for hiding me. Thank you for the blood covering, oh God. Thank you for my mind, oh God. Thank you for the fresh incense of your oil, oh God. The little upon my head, oh God. In my heart, flowing through down, oh God. Oh God, we thank you right now, Lord. We pray right now that you cause a schizophrenia to the devil. Oh my God, oh my shake, God, scatter them seven ways. Ah, and every spectating demon, God, we ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you will rebuke it right now. Every intimidating demon. Oh God, we cancel the assignment of the devil. We thank you right now for the inward dwelling of the Holy Ghost and the moon. We thank you for the fire. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for the death, burial, and resurrection of your name. God, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you right now. Now, God, let me hear what you would hear and say what you would say. Let me see what you would see in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on and clap your hands. You'll find, you'll find, you'll find, you'll find, you'll find the worshiper in me. Your worship will keep you with God. Your praise will get you to God. How many of y'all believe that? I'm a worshiper. I like to get caught up in my worship. Hallelujah. Today, if you could turn to the book of Haggai, the second chapter, starting at the third verse, the book of Haggai, you'll find the worshiper in me. Ah, hallelujah! The book of Haggai. Second chapter, third verse. I saw the title or the theme was for his glory. I had to try to understand that. First, understand what the glory is. That's right. That's right. What is the glory? What is it? God began to talk to me. Glory. And he said, I don't think my people understand what the glory is. I think we're building churches without the glory. I think we're giving title and not the position. Well, look at y'all, y'all are not quiet. But there's a difference between title and position. That's right. I just thank God because He let me understand what it is. And I won't be long because it gets a little messy after He began to deal with me about it. But in the book of Haggai, it says, who is left among you? The third verse. Yes. Second chapter, the third verse in the book of Haggai. Yes. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Who? Who? I must say that again. Who 
is left among you that saw this house, this church, this fellowship in its first glory? Who's left? And how do you see it now? This is the word, unless you ripped it out. Is it not in your eyes in comparison to nothing? In other words, who is left that remember the ways that the Lord has anointed us to follow? Yes. Who is left amongst the patriarchs and the matriarchs of the gospel that saw us in our first glory? What do you mean by your first glory? Well, there is a definition that they give about the glory in the Hebrew, and it's called kabod. Uh, it means the weight or the heaviness. The same word is used to express importance, honor. And majesty. Glory is referred to as position, possession, and the length of life. Uh huh. So, so who here remember God when He was in His position and possession of life in the church? Uh -huh. Who, who, who remember the things where we were in covenant with God? When people got saved under the anointing of the Holy Ghost right. and their lives were instantly changed. Right. Right. Who was here in the first glory when after you got saved, you were glad to go out and get the gospel? Oh, yes. It was free. There was no charge to the gospel. Somebody say the church in our first glory. The church in yes, first yes. Glory. And that is not the only thing we've taken out. The Lord said, tell them to go back to what kept you saved and in salvation. What kept you on a firm foundation, the solid rock. What the church was built upon in her first glory. We've taken out the main principles of being saved Coming in, confessing the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. You confess and you believe. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then the saints would say, "Now you need the Holy Ghost." That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talking about the first glory. Yeah. Look at y'all. Some of y'all done got mad already. But the first glory, Roshi is when, when. When after we got saved and we confessed and believed, somebody let you know about sanctification. Huh? Talk about Now you got to be sanctified. What does that mean? Set aside, set apart. The Bible says, come out from among them. Be separate, said by. For I am holy, be holy. Come out from among them. Don't yoke yourself with unbelievers. And then the Bible talks about being baptized. Uh-oh. We left that out. We shut down baptism. But how many of y'all know that's the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? That's a symbolic, natural demonstration huh, of you dying. Come on here, somebody. I'm talking about the first church in her glory. Yeah, yeah. We went down in the waters of his name. We knew we was coming up new. Huh? It was something about the natural demonstration of baptism. I remember growing up, coming up in holiness. Oh my. Hallelujah. Immediately after you were saved, they said you got to go down. Oh, look at this. Y'all done got quiet. But I'm talking about the church in the first one. Right, right. mm -hmm. I ain't talking about the second thing now because now everything is not uh, 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 about the glory of God. It's not about the church in our first. I'm talking about going back to the fundamentals of things. Huh? Why our churches are not filled with believers? Mm -hmm. 
Because the Bible says as many as went down that were baptized, he added to the church daily. Somebody tap your neighbor and say, you got to go back to the church in our first glory. We got to bring it back, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to bring it back. Hey, listen, you got to hold your pastor, your apostle, your bishop accountable to the church in the first glory. We will go to convention, convocation, and we knew baptism was a part of it. Look at y'all looking at me. I'm talking about what the word of God says. 1 Corinthians 11 and 23 talks about the baptism. And the communion. Uh-oh. We got to bring back the communion. Have sweet communion with God. Hmm? And the Bible says that if you committed any sins, you should be forgiven. And you shouldn't even take the communion. Take a part of his body. You take the body. You take the bread as a part of his body. And, and the wine or, or the grape juice that we drink represents his blood. He said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Somebody shout first glory. We got to take the church back. Okay, how many of y'all believe that? So God has positioned us. He's positioned us as his glory. If we want to use that for his glory, that we were made for his glory. But what for his glory are we made of? What? Mm -hmm. So, we have to represent this body, the temple of the Holy Ghost. All right. All right. Hmm? If I take you back into the book of 1 Samuel, where they dealt with the Ark of the Covenant and the, the relationship. The relationship. His glory will not be magnified in us and manifested until relationship has been established again in covenant. It's the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant, the children of Israel. They already knew they were positioned. They already knew what possessed them. Who possessed them? It was, it was, it was the Ark of the Covenant. They knew when they were in trouble what they had to do. Yes, that's right. But the wrong leadership. Oh my shit, came on. Y'all gonna throw me out now. <laughs> in wrong leadership. If we don't direct the people back to the glory, the first glory that the state of the church was in, the glory will depart from the church. There will be a spirit of it Oh my God. I see the spirit of in the body in many of our leaders. They have lost and don't have the glory. You got to remember the glory of God. It's his presence. It's his position. He should be in the midst of the church. Oh my Shanda. And I'm not talking about the organized church. I'm talking Church. The kingdom church. Oh my God. It's not meat or drink. Hallelujah. The kingdom church is not just talking in tongues. Uh oh. Somebody gonna get mad at me in a minute. I like to talk in tongues like the best. That's my second language. I know that's right. Trust and believe. Somebody say you gotta. You know, build up the spirit to talk to God, talk to tongue, you never I get good and ready. I bind the devil up. I got a tongue that bind him up in too. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. But I'm talking about the church. Yeah. In her first glory. Yeah. If we don't take back our conventions and our convocations, yeah. back to baptism and communion. Yeah. That's a demonstration to God that I possess your land. I, I 
possess your person. I possess what I called. This is my purpose. God must get the glory. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God must get the glory. God. God gets the glory. Jesus is his name. Huh? God is the supernatural being, but the Jesus is his name. Yeshua. Huh? Yahweh. Jehovah Jireh supplies the need. I said, not the material things, but the need of the Spirit of God. God gets the glory. The book of Haggai says about us knowing her in her first glory. But how many of y'all know God is raising a generation right now that's willing to take it back? Huh? Take it back where we dropped it at. Take it back. Pick it up. Take it back with the Holy Ghost, with fire, with declaration and power. With clarity and understanding of knowing what the glory is, who the glory is, why the glory is. Tap your neighbor and say, so where is the glory? This last thing I want to leave with you is God begin to deal with me about the church as being the bride. He said, be prepared how, be prepared and be careful how we dress the bride. We have to be careful. We can't spread her out and have anything come into the bride. The Lord let me know everything was not ordained to be a part of the bride. Everything was not ordained to be in the sanctuary. He said, I want to take the bride from sanctuary to tabernacle. And tabernacle into the holy of holies. And the Lord began to move and he began to let me know. He said, let them know. Some of us. I want the church building for us. Yes, yes. We have allowed the corrupt seed of pride and religious traditional ways to pollute the atmosphere of the sanctuary. Yes, yes, yes. Us. Yes. Us. Yes. He said, we've allowed that. He said, I want you to know that once we come up and come out, because a lot of this stuff is not saving. It's not my glory. My glory is the presence. It's going to affect change. How many of y'all know that the glory of God will affect change? Hallelujah. The glory is the blood of Jesus for salvation unto us. The glory is that we can go out and preach into all the world the gospel. Hallelujah. The glory of God is what he gave us. Amen. He gave us pastors after our own heart to honor them in his glory. Somebody shout the church in her first glory. We have to get back to the church in her first glory. I thank you, praise God. I didn't want to be long, but I wanted to be strong. Hallelujah. But I want to give this as a way of a testimony. Baptism is important in the church. Um, just had a baptism at our church. So powerful. And some of y'all come from saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled parents. I didn't. I always tell people, I said, I didn't. I, I came from the fertilizer. Trust. But the Lord, good things come out of fertilizer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So my father, who was an unbeliever, non-believer for years, when I got saved, I, you know, when you get saved, you want to go save the world. Yes. My father used to say, don't come in here with that Jesus. So he said, and I would say, so we wouldn't speak for years. We didn't speak. You wouldn't even know we were father and daughter. You wouldn't know. And I just kept praying. And God said to me, you have to show the more excellent way. That's right. That's right. You're not responsible for how he treats you. That's 
but you are responsible for how you right. treat him. That's right. That's right. right. So I started going in, speaking to him. He would never say nothing. He'd be mean, mean as a dog. Yeah. He said, that's all right. He said, God, one of these days, I would leave a lot of days crying. I said, but that's all right, God. I said, you're going to fix it. Yeah. Then one day I went in, I kept on speaking. And he said, hey, daughter, how are you? Praise the Lord. I ain't know what to do. And after he spoke to me, I still started praying for him. I said, God, how is it that I pray for others? And their families are saved, and it looked like mine is going astray. Went to my grandmother's house maybe a year, two years later. He said, oh, I got something to tell you. I said, what? He said, I just want to change. Oh, my God. Oh, praise God. After that, he started treating me so nice. So he said we were having a baptism. You see? And he called me up and he said, Tell my son-in-law, I want him to take me down in the water. He said, but tell him, I said, don't drop me. Then he said it again. He said, tell him, I said, don't drop me. And then I, the Lord said, listen, listen. He said, tell him, I said, don't drop me. I got it. I knew what I was saying. Yes, that's right. But my father walked into the church, y'all, which he cursed my church. Said he would never step foot in my church. My daddy was in my church. Came in high up. Came in my church. Last Sunday, and I'll tell you, we ain't had church. Listen, we lost it. When I tell you we lost it, pastor couldn't even preach. I'm telling you, and then the people begin to shout, just take us to the water. And we went to the water. Pastor Freeman and my daddy was the first one person there. He said, I, I got to be first. I got to be the first one. Don't tell me if you don't pray. What won't happen? Because I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. Oh, my son. I just wanted to let you know to keep praying for your second loved ones. They might not be what they look like right now. all jacked up now. But keep on praying. Stand in the position for it. Let the glory of God have his way. My dad went down in the waters of his name. Oh my God. I told him, I said, the Holy Ghost is next. That's it. Wait, wait, see, y'all don't understand why I'm excited. My daddy was a drug user, alcoholic, mean and nasty. Didn't raise none of his children. Huh? Will curse me every chance he got. But won't God turn it around? Yes. 
against me. Somebody shout the church in the first glory. Be blessed in Jesus. Thank you.